<laughs> Yo, we got um, we got major shit for uh, not knowing where merengue was from. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, hey. we're back. <laughs> Feeling yes. very festive from our big noche. Yes, we had a fun noche. Yes. We, uh, in the Casa de Hill. Yeah. <laughs> My plantationita. <laughs> 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 it was really cool. We were able to do like a little outdoor fight party. Uh, I got to test out the, uh, the, the setup for mm-hmm. our future get together. So that'll be fun. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. It was a uh, perfect weather. A uh, huge screen. There was not a bad seat in the house, which is very no. hard to find in, you know, in fight watching. I know. Uh, when I was looking at ticket prices for the Sphere, I'm like, I'm curious if they sold out. And there were some seats that were like $36,000. And then there were other seats that were like seven hundred. I'm like... I bet that was right by a pillar, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right behind, I don't know, the the camera rig that shows all the worlds or something. Man, some of those cameras are crazy. I want to see. It looked like they almost had them on drones or something. They were just yeah. going so crazy all over the place. I I thought that some of, of the movies that they were playing in between, you know, in between rounds were just really beautiful. And I think it would have been in, like completely crazy to see in person yeah no i i really wonder what that looked like the few videos that i've seen of them actually like people sitting in the stands actually looking around looked pretty insane Mm -hmm. like those it looked very immersive i feel like we were only getting like a sliver of the actual version that people were seeing i thought it was really cool though that they did try to to make us be able to to see and have a similar experience although it was you know not at all what the audience <laughs> inside the sphere was seeing. We got to see a little taste of it. So I, I felt that it was nice that we were included in that. It was. It was beautiful. And you know, the projector screen, every now and then the wind would blow. And it would t- kind of go like sphere shaped. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I think I know what they're feeling right now. <laughs> the wind was helping us out. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was a pretty cool thing that they did. I I don't know. Like I feel like a lot of people uh were doubtful, including myself, of what a two twenty million dollar production of a UFC event would look like. Like would it feel worth it? Would it feel like they put the money in the right spots? And even though I would like some of that money to go to the fighters' pockets a little bit more, I thought it was really cool display of just what you can do with MMA. It doesn't have to be just like the cut and dry. There's the fights. Look at the fighters. Everyone cheers. The fighter walks out. Next fighter walks in. You know, like they, they actually did something with the production value. It's one of the main uh, criticisms that people have had with the UFC versus shows like Pride, um, even 1FC, all the J- J- Japanese shows back then, where they would really put a lot of value into like the fighters' walkouts and the entrances and, and just the show in general. And the UFC has become so like Sunday night football that they got away from the whole pomp and circumstance of the actual fights. But this one, it brought it back. I thought it was beautifully done. I would have liked to have seen, as you were saying, that they – they did great production like for the organization for the sport Mm -hmm. i like um as you just mentioned like how the japanese organizations like pride and dream how they they made it more about the fighters yeah yeah you know so it would have been just the day yes (laughs) (laughs) uh but i i did think it was beautifully done i thought it was just absolutely stunning you know the visuals in it and i'm i'm interested to see if they'll you know maybe do something. I know that they said that they didn't want to do the sphere again. It was a one and done, but I wonder if now they're thinking that, you know, that could be different possibly, or if they wanted to maybe add something, you know, to it. I would like that. I would, I would like if they continued to just try new things and, um, 
you know, bring back kind of the fun of fighting, the the fun of telling stories and stuff. I think, I think, like you said, bringing more of the individual fighters' personality to each one would be really cool. Like even Bellator, a lot of times, like before PFL merger, they would really get into just okay, this fighter walks out, and you show like a gorilla for like <laughs> for the guy because his nickname is like the gorilla. You know what I mean? Or or uh, like if if they had like a black beast, there would be like a really cool visual and like yellow eyes on a black screen. You know, they, they really get into that whole like creating the image of the fighter. I feel like UFC, because of the success of this show, maybe they'll start investing on that. Maybe they'll start veering towards making it a little more exciting, telling more of a story instead of just making UFC be the main character. Yeah, they have they have started to add to a little bit of the storyline for the fighters when they're walking out. Like and Megan Olivier will, yeah, you know, start talking about the fighter and giving like a little tidbit of of their life, something like that for the fighter. Um, I I do enjoy that. I think I'd like to see more of that, maybe a little bit more visual on it as well. Yeah, for sure. But uh, it was cool. I like some of the stuff. I was like, that's a little much. But then. As you know, the chocolates started kicking in. I was in. <laughs> I did notice a difference. At first, I was like pre and post chocolates. Uh, I did. At, at first, I was like, "Man, they over here doing some fake Disney uh, Mexico world <laughs> stuff." Welcome to the Aztec world, ten thousand BC. What was that movie that uh, that uh, um, Apocalypto? Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the <laughs> apocalypto world. And uh, and then, yeah, as I started just relaxing and getting into it, I'm like, this guy like, This is pretty cool. <laughs> I'm not that mad at it after all. <laughs> Look at all uh, the colors. It's so pretty. <laughs> Dia de la Marta. <laughs> Let's go. The, oh, the ring card girls. I was just about to mention. <laughs> They were so okay. So I love what they were doing, but I was so they were distracted. Having a hard night. I was so distracted by the sign throwing. There, those signs were out to get them. Yeah, <laughs> those signs were out to get them. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they needed a few more walkthroughs mm-hmm. with how to properly place the sign because they're octagon shaped, so they bounce. If you don't, if you don't set them flat, they're gonna roll. And they were trying to take those girls out. <laughs> yeah, but let let's not let that distract from the fact that they looked stunning. It was it was incredible. The makeup and the pageantry yeah. and just the, the amazing outfits, everything about those ring card girls was just stunning. It was amazing. Even when the mushrooms hit though, I was like, <laughs> co main and main event. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what are you guys You're doing? Like, you lost me. You lost it's me. too weird. Too weird. Should this, there's a lot more stuff you could have done with the things that actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little too futuristic. It was too futuristic. But for I me. got it. I was like, okay, this is a Aztec warrior in the future. I, I get it. I, now, I get what you're trying to the do. The gold girls, the gold girls. No, those were pre. They they were like they reminded me of the robots in Futurama. Like, Leave them alone. <laughs> I was like, what is this? No, you just gotta <laughs> sit back. You can't judge or criticize. You just have to appreciate the the work that went in all of it. She's like, yo. <laughs> Stop it. No, they looked amazing. Please take my hand so I can walk down the stairs, please. <laughs> they looked amazing. Yeah, they, they looked cool. Um, And the future one for the main event, I was just like. It didn't get you. All right. But, the, I mean, maybe that had something to do with the performances because they were getting after it before the mm-hmm. co-main and the main. And then you got to those fights and things slowed down a bit. Okay, so you're blaming the ring card girls. I, it might be. It might have been too much. <laughs> just too much. Like, I, they would have been fine if they just had their regular bikinis on. I'm just saying. <laughs> would have been two knockouts. <laughs> no, I loved everything about it. I thought it was beautiful. Yeah. Um. What did you think, since we're already there, what did you think of the main event and the cold main event and the criticism So I'm hearing that a it's ton been getting? of criticism. Yeah. And I think you guys just got to like back off and appreciate the work that went into that. There was a lot riding on a title fight. There's uh Shevchenko, you know, has had two, well, a 
a draw in which she thought she won and mm. was winning until she until she wasn't in the first. So she was intent and strategic and dedicated to getting that belt back, and she did. And this is what we were saying would be the best path to victory for mm-hmm. her. And and she did it, and she executed it flawlessly. She gave Grasso virtually no space to execute an offense. Yeah. And I thought that her, her grappling was the path to victory. She did it well. And, I mean, good for her. I think she shows the perseverance and, and what it takes to, you know, dig yourself out of a hole and, and face adversity. Mm-hmm. It was everything that she did well in the second fight. She did it and she doubled down on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't the most exciting part of that second fight. You know, the exciting part was when they were swinging and when it was an even fight and they were both scoring. But then when Shevchenko would get it down to the ground, she slowed the fight down a lot. And she was able to do that consistently in this fight. Um, I am I am surprised just because I feel like uh, a lot of people like Shevchenko. So I am surprised that she's getting that much criticism for the way she fought Grasso. And again, people have short memories. As soon as Shevchenko gets out there and destroys another girl, then she's going to be back on the cool champion list, you know. But for right now, and I think people are a little uh, soured by, you know, Bilal winning. And we we have like a bunch of up and coming heavy grapplers that are in the top two, three spots that can easily take over in their title challenge too. People are getting a little scared that we're going from the striker era with the O'Malley's and the Adesanya's. And now we're entering the grappling era again. Listen, this is MMA. If you want to watch pure striking, go to boxing. If you want to watch pure striking, go to, you know, any kind of kickboxing organization. 1FC has MMA and kickboxing FC, and yeah. Muay Thai. But this is MMA and there are so many paths to victories. And mm-hmm. just because it's not what you would like it to look like doesn't mean that it's boring or not entertaining. I feel like, you know, an evolved MMA fan should at this point be able to appreciate all different styles of fighting. Evolved like the ring card girls in the main event. <laughs> <laughs> their, with their silver spikes <laughs> they were spectacular i would like that to be a halloween costume i would Ooh. like to have so many wardrobe changes this october yes can we do ring car girls? yes <laughs> the i get to wear the feathers oh okay dude those feathers were amazing that was the hot quail, quail feathers that Oof. that was hot i like the aztec in, inspired one i think yeah. that was my favorite one mm-hmm. that and the dia de la morta one was really cool. the best one <laughs> Um, I like the Bandito Girl one, uh, the ones that were on the Lopez, the uh, Lopez Ortega fight. Mm-hmm. Those are pretty cool, yeah. too. Yeah, lots of fun looks. Lots yes. of fun looks. I wish that they made uh, Bruce Buffer dress up in something. I was surprised he didn't have <laughs> wardrobe changes, did he? I, I only so. I only noticed the, the blue tuxedo. I noticed he was doing a little bit different movements. Oh, was he doing a little? No, he wasn't doing a little shimmy. He wasn't doing all that. <laughs> he just had a little bit different moments. I like that he evolves as as an artist as well, oh, as yeah. an entertainer. He has you know, to. <laughs> as an entertainer. He's a little bit too close. <laughs> an entertainer. <laughs> He's an artist. Back to, <laughs> you know, the, the fans being upset and saying this is the era of boring champions. I've seen it all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that... The sport constantly evolves with uh, just as the fighters, what is successful and, and what is not. And that can that can change. And a fighter can figure out what style best works for them because this is mixed martial arts. You know, yeah. They can pick and choose based on their opponent. And that was the safest, most effective path to victory. And I admire and respect it. Yeah, the uh, adaptability, I think, is, is the biggest quality for – someone at the highest level because you train 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 you're gonna be good at a lot of things um but the person who can be good enough to pull off something that they're not the best at but it makes the most sense you know in that moment that's what Shevchenko was able to do she was able to stifle get on top and just ride out a victory and uh Grasso was trying to throw up some stuff of her own she was trying to grapple a little bit but it, it was just never really that close I was there was that moment where she locked in the guillotine. I forget what round it was. Oh, but she locked yes. in the guillotine. And I was like, oh. And then Shevchenko 
almost screwed herself again. That was really frustrating to watch. I was like, <laughs> just fight the hands. Just get your head out because this looks a lot like this. Yes. And she could have completely, completely like off tracked herself. Yeah. What was the fight? Was it Robbie or uh, Roy McDonald? Uh, where he got locked up in like a darce or something or a guillotine and he didn't tap and then Herb stopped the fight and he's like, what are you doing? I'm fine. And then Herb was just like, ah, oh, man, I'm sorry. And he's like, Herb was pissing me off. And he's like, ah, oh, it's fine. I, it was, uh, was it Roy McDonald? I don't, I don't. Or Robbie Lawler, I mean. I think it was Robbie Maybe Lawler. Maybe it was Robbie Lawler. But I remember that happened. And Robbie was so cool about it. He's like, it happens he's you such know a, yeah he's such he's a such a g but yeah. um but yeah that that can easily happen and that fight never got overturned because it looked like you were out he made him release the thing and even though he didn't even tap it was a mistake on the ref but it, that goes down in his record as a submission like stoppage so she was playing with fire and she would have been so pissed if the fight had ended that way yeah and people would have believed that she was tapping because it looked like a really weak punch like almost like she was freaking out or something yeah the thing is those those are not scoring as much as you think they are yeah in that position just fight get good position and then land effective uh, like land effective punches once from that out. point on. Exactly. Yeah. Once you get you're out gonna of the end danger up on zone. top. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there were little moments there, but Grasso wasn't able to get it done. And Chevchenko finally got her belt back. So who do you think is next? I don't think they're gonna do a fourth fight just because it was so one sided. Um, but who do you think is next next after that? Oh, I gotta pull up the rankings. Ooh, hold on. let's do it. You know hold what? I'm gonna take on. this poncho off while you're doing okay. it because I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> okay, there we go. All right, flyweights rankings. Hold on, let me pull this whole thing up. So I know uh, Manon Furet is supposed to be uh, one of the next in line. Yeah, who's she fighting next? Um, I don't. I so don't she's, think she's booked. Is she? No, she's. Isn't she? She's fighting someone. Damn it! Hold on. Yeah, she's. No, no, no. Who's this? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, who's that? That's not. Her. That's not her. That's not her. I'm like. <laughs> so in the rankings, we have uh, Manon, we have Aaron, we have Macy, we have Rose. Rose and Aaron are fighting each other. Okay. Macy takes a back seat. So because she's pulled up a fight, I have to put her back in the line. So I, I mean, I think Manon should be up if she's not already booked with somebody. I don't think she's booked. And I think that's why I think they were waiting to see how that, uh, how that fight shook out. And now she's waiting. Yeah. She's TBD and, and, uh, she's the next in line. That's TBD. Her and Macy Barber, if they don't fight, then it should be Manon yeah. next. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm surprised that Macy Barber is so high up there. Um, let me see who she fought. You know, I she would has, like to see Macy and Natalie fight next, personally. Macy and who? Natalie. Silva. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Natalia, oh, sorry. Natalia, yeah. So um, when I was watching the Dumont fight, uh, it reminded me a lot of... Her style, just Dumont has a little more, a little more power behind her strikes. Mm -hmm. But uh, that that fight reminded me a lot of that. But yeah, I I would like to see that happen too. I think it's I think it's only fair because I feel like um, Macy Barber hasn't really fought too many top girls at flyweight. She beat uh, Caitlyn. And Rebus, but I don't think that Rebus was ranked when she fought her at flyweight. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see her fight someone on the up and coming just to secure her spot. Yeah, the last time that she fought, she fought um, Chikagan. Yeah. Or not Chikagan. Blonde fighter. Yes, blonde fighter. I forget her uh, new name. Oh, Sermonara. Yes, yeah, Sermonara. Sermonara. Sorry, girl. Uh, yes. Um, but I mean, and she's always been up there in the ranking. She's mm -hmm. always been about like top five, give or take. Okay. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think Macy still has a couple of fights before we can talk about like actual 
actual title contention. Yeah, at least one. Yeah. At least one. And I think that's what her uh, fight with um, Rose was supposed, supposed to be. be. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, you know, they both got kind of got held back a little bit because Rose got that quick matchup with Cortez. And now we have to see her against one more person. And um, yeah, I think Manon's earned that right. You know, she's 12 and one. She came off of a big win over Blanchfield, uh, beat Rose already too. So I think that's going to be a great fight, her versus Shevchenko. Um, how do you, uh, one of our fan questions that we got, how do you see Shevchenko approaching this? Do you think she d- goes all D1 Shevchenko again, Shevchenko net off, or do you think she goes back to her striking ways and tries to mix it up a bit more? I mean, from what I just saw with Shevchenko, I think she has the ability to find the chink in the army, the chink in the armor, <laughs> and exploit it. <laughs> so I say I haven't seen much in the way of Manon's grappling. Yeah. Um, I would like to see that fight being taken to the ground and then Shevchenko just really like capitalizing in that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think think that would be a smart path to victory. No, for sure. I remember when she was supposed to fight, um, who was it? Andrade. And everyone was like, Oh, cause she fought somebody before that. Uh, Shevchenko fought, uh, who was it? Maya before that. Uh And, and, and she like, Almost lost a round. I don't even know if she lost a round, but she had trouble with destroying Maya on the ground. And everyone was like, oh, when she fights Indrad, Indrad's going to outgrapple her. And she beat her up, took her down, and beat on her so bad. And so I wouldn't be surprised if Shevchenko went back to that I'm going to beat you at your own game kind of style against someone like Manon Fioret, especially because... You don't see that uh, sneaky grappling thing happening. And she was winning on the feet with Grasso in the first fight before that happened. So I'm wondering uh, what path she takes. But at the same time, Fiorid is big. And she moves around so much. It, she, yeah. So I'm wondering, like, yeah. I think I think she's going to be good at adapting and flowing and see what seeing what's open. But you have to think that the takedown is what you want to do against her. Mm-hmm. And because she's a little bigger than someone like, like a Rose at the time when they fought, you got to feel like she'd be able to get, like, at least, like, a clinch takedown or something where she'd be able to... Stifle her against the cage, do her slow nice, her down. Yeah, yeah. Do her nice throw that she does against the cage. Yeah, yeah. That little bump. Yeah, and then get on top, Great slow hits. her down for yeah. a little bit. So yeah, that should be a fun one. One that people will get angry at again. How dare you? No respect. Listen, it's mixed martial arts. You got to do what you got to do to win. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the clearest path to success and being unscathed isn't the most exciting, but it still should be respected. Yeah. Well, one thing that got me excited about that fight, though, was when Blanchfield landed that head kick in the last round. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ooh, okay, maybe the chink in the armor is just going for broke, like going for takedowns, going for takedowns, and then using that to set up your strikes. Like that could be a really clear path for, to victory for Shevchenko too mm-hmm. against Manon. So we shall see when and if that happens in the near future. Um, and then the main event. Another one that people were so angry about. People were so upset. Why is this on my sphere? (laughs) Why are you upset about this? Yeah, so this is exactly the fight that a lot of people expected to happen. It was one of two options. It was either going to be O'Malley is able to counter Marab when he rushes in and goes for the takedown, or Marab is going to be able to pull all the strikes out and get him to miss, get him to, like, get taken out. And that's what happened. He did a real good job of just being patient. Like, he, when he came in, it was after a ton of pulls, a ton of feints, a lot of level changes, a lot of, like, level changes to the strike and flurries and things to just get Sean off of his rhythm. And then he would swoop underneath and attack. And O'Malley just wasn't fast enough to respond. 
It um he did not have a good round until the fifth round, mm. and by then it was too late. Then he started really using those, uh, those teeps. Yeah, which definitely the hurt stab. Rob. Yeah, the, the stab, stab, the stab to the guts. Love that um, one. <laughs> no, it's good. It's effective. We saw mm-hmm. we saw how effectively or how effective it can be, but it was just too little too late i don't know what judge gave two rounds but i would definitely give him the fifth i need to look i was just i have it up right now (laughs) oh okay so sal d'amato and chris lee both gave o'malley the third and the fifth what guys guys what happened in the third to give him a round freaking nothing i do remember thinking okay this is o'malley's best round so far, but he was still getting like pieced up and taken down. Yeah, yeah, it, that's that's an odd read. Um, but those guys are uh, habitual on the takers. Offenders. Yeah, yes, they are both on my list, dude. And Herb Dean, yes, was was very suspect in this fight. He was. He was constantly calling for action, and I'm like, what are you talking about? So this. This is the thing about mixed martial. This is his style. This is Marab's style. This is his game plan. You know, you've seen what him it fight. Is. Yeah, <laughs> he's not stalling. He is working. How can you like put the pressure on him like that and say work, work, work? I just mm-hmm. didn't understand and that. And also, it's not his job. Yeah, that in my mind, unless he is egregiously stalling, then okay, you you warn him, you stand him up, kind of thing. But he was he did not stop moving the whole time. Mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. was not a point where he was just laying and grinding. He was he was moving constantly, off balancing O'Malley. He was working the whole time. Yeah. No, I've I've seen that with uh, I don't know if it was just Herb or if there, there's been other refs, but I've seen that recently where they'll get to half guard and they're like keep working and it's like he's in half guard his he's pushing the knee down and punching him what else is working from half guard it's really crazy to try to understand because i understand you want the fight to stay exciting and you want there to be action you don't want someone to just run the clock out but also it's the person's job on bottom to get free you can't just lock your legs and try to keep them from moving and advancing and expect the stand up that I, that's really not fair. And I think a lot of times referees react in different ways. And so some people who are lucky enough to get stood up like that end up just doing that. So it's not always the guy on top too. Sometimes it's the guy on bottom who's like stalling the work from happening as they should, because they don't want to get hit, but uh, you can't rely on that as a way to get stood up. No, the referee is there to, to protect the fight to keep them you know out of of danger in those kind of extreme situations but they're not there to do you a solid and stand you up like you got to do that yourself they're not there to give you yellow cards you know like (laughs) this isn't pride it's not soccer yeah no no penalties here um hey i i thought that was really strange but then also uh there was that weird moment in the beginning of the fight where o'malley's coach what's his name uh I keep want to say Trevor Whitman. No, he would never do that. It's such he a is gross, respectful. disgusting thing that that guy was doing. Um, but it starts with a T, right? Troy? Tim Welch. Tim. Tim, Tim Welch. Welch. He was heckling at the ceremonials. He is disgusting. Probably heckling all week. Heckling when the fight starts. But it's also, I got to criticize Marab too. Like, keep your head in the game, you know? I don't know specifically what he was saying. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we were talking about this when Demopolis was getting fouled last week by Amaro, um, you know, with the fingers in the glove. Like, you have to keep your wits about you. You have to focus on the task at hand. Yeah. Like, don't get distracted and pulled into it. I do wonder what Tim was saying to him now. I I mean, there are things that you can say that will take your head out of the game for sure. And uh, I, I can't. Oh, oh, my goodness. Go get him. I can't even imagine if uh, one of my opponent's coaches were doing that to me because I also. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Dog party. Oh, my Dog goodness. Par- oh, my baby. goodness. Hi. Hello. I'm jealous. Come yeah. <laughs> ah, don't knock over the course. Hi, baby. Oh, oh, my God. I love you so much. I missed you. 
We this. missed you. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hello, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? Ah, uh, it's not important. <laughs> I was getting angry, and now I'm happy. He read the room. Yeah, we <laughs> were getting. Like, we were getting. Heated. You guys need some comfort. <laughs> but no, um, having a hot-headed coach as well. I think that would be a very bad recipe for disaster, having someone heckling the fighter who's not even in the fight. Like, mm-hmm. if, if a fighter says something to me, it's great because we're going to settle it right now. And usually you hug and make up afterwards. Yeah. But if a coach is saying something to the fighter, it's like... It's uncalled so for. It's, it's uncalled so unprof- for. It's unprofessional. It is. I agree. It's... It's kind of, it, it kind of makes me not like the fighter more. Like, why are you keeping that company? Yeah, it's a strange thing to do. But to his defense, it worked in the Aljo fight. It got in Aljo's head. He There was that video going around where uh, the coach was saying, let's go, Aljo, let's go. I guess he was impersonating his coaches and, like, telling him to go. And that's when he hit that check hook on the way in. Mm-hmm. So... Who's going to who's gonna argue, hey, you're being a dick, but being a dick got you an extra million dollars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, I, I understand it, but it, it's also disgusting. <laughs> 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 so I wonder, the one thing that Marab did do better than Demopolis, though, is he did stay protected, even though he wasn't necessarily making eye contact. That kick came up and he said, hey, Herb D. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Herb you need to get that guy he's like black and punches Herb <laughs> you know? fine so, he was still handling what he needed to handle I was impressed with that but that could have also been very bad okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my shadow <laughs> Corey McKenna's dog everyone <laughs> bye butcher so uh yeah th- those are some really weird moments and i'm wondering if uh like herb actually kind of handled that moment well where he was like keep fighting keep fighting but then he also told off the corner hey yeah excessive coaching yeah yeah that that's definitely a thing that you're not allowed to do yeah yeah or is it no you don't heckle the fighters during a fight. Yeah, you can't heckle, right? No, that's, that's not heckling. A, that's not allowed. And it's just called, yeah. you know, excessive coaching because okay. we don't have another, like, term for it. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't it's sure. just like if, you know, two fighters are in neutral corners, you're not allowed to coach. You, yeah. Like, you would call yeah. the same kind of thing. It's just like kind of a, a blanket statement for right. what it is. Right, right. No, and it definitely should be allowed. Like, it, that's, it's gross. But, um... Moving on to the moment in, I think it was the second round, when Rob was kissing Sean oh. O'Malley's neck. Oh that gosh. was kind of a weird moment, too. He commented, they asked him about that on the post-fight presser. And it's 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 really hard for me. I, I don't know Rob at all, but it's really hard for me to be mad at him. He's he so just, He's so <laughs> likable. I'm like, you can do almost no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He just, yeah, he said he was just, uh, yeah, he was, he like, he owned it. He was like, yeah, I was just trying to, you know. I was just kissing him on the neck. I was no messing biggie. with him. <laughs> I was trying to show him what kind of position I was in kind of thing. Yeah. Um, It's hard. Now, if somebody else had done it, I may have been a little bit more offended. Oh. I may have been like. If O'Malley's coach had done it. <laughs> Oh, that would have been blasphemy. <laughs> Unacceptable. Yeah. No, um, it's uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, Herb yelled at him for that, too. And then they kind of stood up. And Herb kind of dropped the ball here, too, because he said, hey, stop that. And it almost sounded like the round was well, over. Well, he said stop. And when a ref says stop, you stop. Yeah. He and, didn't restart the action. Yeah, he didn't get in the middle of them when the fight started again. Yeah. It was just a very weird, gray, foggy thing, and both fighters were receiving two different messages. Yes. Herb, come on, bro. Oh, man. It's the main event. Gotta get your shit to go. Yeah, there, I mean, I feel like that there was a lot going on in yeah. that fight. So. <laughs> it, was, it was a really strange fight. It was fight. pretty chaotic. But he, Marab, <laughs> aside from those little moments, Marab fought O'Malley perfectly. 
Yeah, and he was receiving so much doubt and criticism from O'Malley's fans, from from everyone, basically, yeah. just saying that he was going to get, you know, sniped on the way in. Mm. He was never going to be able to get his hands on him, and, and he did a great job of executing that game plan. Yeah, it was really, it was really well done. And it makes me think that uh, he's going to be a pretty dominant champion, but first he has to get past someone who is just as good as just laying and sucking the air out of people as he is. So everybody is saying that he is, there's no way he's going to get past Umar Namagamadov. Really? And why is that? Uh, they said that Namagamadov um, has better striking and striking. Stri- God damn, I said it again. <laughs> striking. <laughs> it's when you're good at striking he's and a grappling at he's the a same time. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know why I always do that. I think I said strikingly last time. It's a really easy word to say. Yeah. I, I think we should make it a thing. I think. You know what? You're right. What's everyone? Two strikers here. Ready uh, to break down. Uh, <laughs> UFC <laughs> no J. Um, so they're saying basically they're, they're grappling. will cancel each other out because they're such strong grapplers. Mm. But um, Umar has better striking. Okay. And ability to, you know, end the fight that way. Mm, interesting. Uh-huh. Yet no one's talking about him. And why is that? Because O'Malley was a champion and they were never going to let Umar fight him. <laughs> well, now they can have him fight him. Yeah. that I mean, that would be fun too. But I doubt that O'Malley's going to be fighting anytime soon. I feel like this was a tough fight for him. And I don't know if it's just me, but I felt like his physique looked a lot different in this fight. O'Malley's did. You were saying that he looked a little bit leaner than he normally does. These fluff tails. <laughs> I know you guys at home are just Damn loving. fluff tails. You're loving it. It's like a shark fin. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, whose cat is that? <laughs> uh, uh, the <laughs> when we, when we, if and when we finally get different seats. Maybe it'll, you know, raise it up. No, so yeah, we will. Them. We will. We, even, we need a couch. This is a little uncomfortable. A little love seat? You yeah. Snuggle up with me? Yes. I, I actually would love a love seat. And then we could show our legs off again. I know. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, we could Hello show again. off all our legs. I know. You guys, we've gotten so many complaints about people, like, looking at, at our yams. I know. Complaining, but now that they're gone, you guys miss them and you're complaining about that. So. The grass is always greener on the other side. I know. Guys, we, there's just no making anybody happy these days. We should give them a little uh, a little uh, reminder before the end of the show. Just like a little leg <laughs> break. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, back to the boring fights. <laughs> just to keep you interested while we talk about Marab versus O'Malley. Um <laughs> Yeah, uh, this, um, what was I going to say? I forget what we were talking about. We were the talking fight. about Umar. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were talking about uh, potentially O'Malley's next fight, and then you were talking about his physique. You look, oh, yeah. You said he looked like he lost a little mass, a little I size. think he did. I You don't see it. I thought he looked a little more bird chesty. Like, he, he usually has, like, a little more package, I felt like, and he looked really flat up top. I feel like he, I feel like he's more pronounced, like, definition-wise, before weigh-ins and Uh i think that's where i'm i'm usually seeing him really you know shredded yeah uh but i didn't i actually didn't watch the weigh-ins at all so i don't know how different he looks but to me in the fight he looked the same the same maybe he was putting a lot more road work you know just anticipating the the cardio and stuff like that and if you're doing a lot of cardio that really eats up your muscle if you're not careful with your calorie intake also if you're doing uh you know a little bit too much road work that can uh, affect your your muscle mass too. Yeah, that's true. Do you see the weigh-ins at all? Uh, no, I didn't I see the, the weigh-ins. weigh-ins. But I'm looking at him, and yeah, you're right. He does look kind of skinny still. <laughs> 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 looking at his uh, Aljo fight, he still looks kind of skinny. Yeah, I feel like he looks more shredded when when he's you know sucking weight. Yeah, is when you can see it. But he has a really long, lanky frame. He is very tall for the division. Mm-hmm. So I feel like when he he doesn't necessarily have the same kind of definition of muscle mass as like a shorter, stockier fighter would mm-hmm. have. Yeah, I just uh, looking at his uh, just his track record and what he usually does after big fights. I feel like he's going to take some time off. Probably not going to try for the immediate rematch. Um, but like 
just enjoy being kind of rich and famous. And I think he's been doing that. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And normally what they do with the person who just loses the belt or, you know, loses the challenge, uh, they'll put them against the number one seed. Mm, And and that will be, you know, uh, see who's who's next or, or where they're at or where the, you know, person on their way up is at. Yeah. But also I would be very surprised if they like fed him to someone like Umar after that performance. No, I could see them giving him like Sanhagen. Yeah, that Maybe would be Davidson. Mm hmm. Oh, I'd like to see him versus Davidson. Or at Corey Sanhagen. I think like either one would be a good fight and it would, you know, potentially be a striking match, but they would push the grappling Uh, They would mix it up for him. So I think it could be a good fight to come back to. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Get get that timing back. Uh Get that confidence back and maybe work your way back up to the top. Yeah, Marab is is a challenge for anyone to fight. That that grapple heavy. He just, he's unrelenting. We saw what he did to uh, Jose Aldo. Who? Huh? Who? Jose to Jose you people Aldo. who act like you didn't watch him in his weck days. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Making me feel like I'm weck. <laughs> weck at pronouncing his name. Yes. Uh, did you see what he did to him? My homie, my favorite fighter, mm. Jose Aldo. Uh-huh. Um, he just stifled him. He yeah. was able to just take away all his fancy, exciting stuff and push him up against the fence. And he didn't even take him down in that fight, but he was just able to slow him down and stop him from fighting. Yeah. And like, that was the moment I first realized how good Marab was, but also how annoying he was. (laughs) How could you do this to my favorite fighter? But then the more you see him do it to everyone, you're like, okay, at least it wasn't just him. Yeah. And then the fact that he was able to do it to O'Malley after such a huge hype train. And, um, you know, it's always an uphill battle when you're fighting people with that kind of push, with that kind of marketing, that kind of like, you know, hand in the pot where the company is on your side as well. It's an uphill battle. And he was able to secure that one beautifully. Mm -hmm. So good job, Marab, even though everyone's hating. Um, let them hate. Let them hate. Do it again. Keep doing it. Make that money. And uh, what do you think about people saying that he's trying to duck Umar? The- I, they immediately started saying that, yeah. didn't they? I think he just didn't understand the question. Yeah. <laughs> they- I, leave, him, leave him alone. Like, let him. <laughs> I mean, even Joe Rogan was asking him, like, right off the top. I know that you just won. This is a huge night. But. Yeah. I'm like, dude, just give him a minute. Well, you know, he was, they had the guy in the sphere queued up. Yeah. And they pointed the camera go. at him. I kind of like how Marab handled it. I don't know if he did it uh, consciously or not. <laughs> but I kind of like that he just was like, I like Dana White. And I like the UFC. And let's go have a conversation because I love this. And I love fighting. And I want to make money. <laughs> it's just like, well, the question was not that. <laughs> But he just, he answered the question. what he wanted to make it. Exactly. This is what you have to do when you do interviews. You don't have to answer. It's like a politician. Yeah. You don't have to answer the question just because someone asked it to you. Yeah. Just. It's a skill. Yeah. Just tell them what you want to tell them. I I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be excited to see that if that ends up happening. Um, We shall see. It probably won't be for a while. I feel like uh, everyone on that card is probably going to take some time off. It was a big card. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, what about Lopez versus Ortega? Oof. Oof. What a show. So it, it was kind of nice because it wasn't a defeated Ortega, which I thought we were going to see because of the moving up a weight class conversations, because of the conversations about how he – uh, doesn't he? He had to make a lot of changes mentally and stop making bad decisions. You always have in the back of your mind, maybe he's still making those, or maybe he's still, um, still af- being affected by those bad decisions, which made him do that big life change. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I was, I was wondering what 
kind of Brian Ortega was going to show up. And it was nice because he was still that same classic Ortega where, yeah, he gets smashed, but then he comes back and he's stronger and he throws things up and he has his moments and he did all that. But Diego Lopez was still able to get the win and get the decision and handle those hairy moments and just outstrike and look, look more crisp on the feet against him. It's his Diego style is not necessarily clean, but what he makes up for it with is, is just that energy, tenacity, the volume, the aggression. Mm -hmm. Um, He just, he knows what he wants to do and he really implements his game plan well. Yeah. And and he's, uh, he's really good at throwing his weight around. You Mm -hmm. know, he's really good at like digging in and going underneath and hitting those combos. There was that nice first combo that he landed in the first round where Ortega was coming in. You know they just practiced that over and over again. And that's one thing the, the, like, the Grasso camp and all those guys are good at is, like, game planning off of tendencies. Yeah. They knew Ortega has a tendency to charge forward not really like a karate charge but just come forward with his boxing with like three punches and he timed that perfectly getting underneath throwing that punch and then coming up with the uppercut he landed a few times but the first time he landed that nasty that was the one that really uh wobbled ortega and almost put him out yeah he creates really great momentum Mm -hmm. with everything that he throws it's all it's all forward even when he's you know going backwards sometimes he's effective um he sticks to the game plan. Um, and I mean, hats off to Ortega for, you know, staying in it. He's still, you know, trying to threaten. He's still trying to come forward, even though, you know, there were a couple of times where he could have been out. Yeah. What did you think about the uh, about the conversation about him going to the ground being not the wisest? Because I thought that was kind of harsh. Uh, Which conversation? They, they, the commentary was saying, oh, he shouldn't have gone to the ground with Ortega. And I think it's just because he dropped him. So they, people always say that. Like, he, he dropped Ortega, and then he went to the ground with him. And then Ortega started throwing up triangles and, you know, trying to tie him down. And he landed an up kick at one point. Yeah. I, I understand why they would say that. Mm-hmm. I do, because you just drop somebody with your punches. Why not let them back up? Right. But if you stun somebody, drop them with your punches, you also have the opportunity to, you know, grab a submission if they're still kind of out of it. So I understand the killer instinct. Um, maybe more of a veteran move in the future would be, hey, just create some space, let the refs down and back up, and then, you know, take your chance at knocking them out because you already did half the work. You're halfway there. Yeah. So I, I understand why they would say that, but Diego's just such a, a force on the ground. Mm-hmm. He's not necessarily worried about, you know, submissions. He can fight them off, which we saw him fight off. You know, or- Ortega threw up his triangle, his famous submission <laughs> that, he, that he gets on everyone. But, you know, Diego was able to to shuck it off. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's, that's the area where he's really shined in all of his in all of his previous fights, which is why I was, which is why that stood out to me. I was a little surprised that the commentary said that because I'm like, dude, he, he does this all the time. He drops him, he gets on top, he gets a TKO. He drops him, he gets on top, he gets a submission. Yeah, it's Brian Ortega, but... Yeah, you can still hurt Ortega on the ground. Just because he's good at submissions doesn't mean that this guy doesn't have confidence in his as well. And he showed that in the fight. So maybe they won't say it again. Yeah, we shall I mean, see. If, if he had dropped him, got on his back, and submitted him like he was intending to do, we wouldn't yeah. be having this conversation. Exactly. You know? But he did kind of allow Ortega to get back up after he dropped him with that calf kick. He was like, okay. That was a little harder than I expected. (laughs) I'm going to let you stand up because it's a little easy to stand up with you right now. But Ortega came back in that second round. Like his, he, he always has to get dropped and beat up a little bit for his striking to start looking nice. But some people need that. I'm telling you, you got to do it backstage before you walk out or in the locker room. Sometimes people just need to feel that. Just get clocked over yeah, the head. Yeah, just see the, see a couple stars, and then you know you wake up and you're like, all right, I'm ready to go. Yeah, you don't overthink anymore because yeah. you have no more brain cells. Exactly, <laughs> you're in survival fight mode. Yeah, <laughs> dude, there's a few fights where the guys you can tell they weren't 
home, but because of all the muscle memory, they yeah. were staying alive. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was I was really um, impressed by that performance by Lopez, and yeah, that puts him top three, right? That puts him way up there. Who could he? Who does he need another fight? To I go think for the so. Title? I think so. Yeah. To be honest, um, he's been he's been doing really really well. I think he's super impressive. I think you know you could make that argument. But I feel like the UFC will give him one more. Yeah. And, you know, it's all about the build, too, in the UFC. He's still building his name. He's still becoming a superstar. Yeah. I think another big finish. And you have. What about him versus Aljo? I mean, that's probably what's going to happen. He Aljo has a fight, though. I think he, is he who fighting? is he fighting? Qatar? No, he just fought. Didn't he just fight him? Uh, Wait. Yeah, he he beat Qatar. Yeah. And he doesn't have... I thought he had a fight scheduled. Aljo. Oh, uh, Evelov. So Ah. he has to get past Evelov, who is Lopez's only loss in the UFC. Short notice, and he almost submitted him a couple times. So it was a pretty crazy back and forth fight for a short notice fight. He it was one of those fights where the loss made him more famous than if he had won mm. because he just he came in, said, fuck it, threw caution to the wind and just went for it. So that was a really exciting fight. And when we see Aljo versus him, we'll see we'll have a little glimpse of what that fight could look like. So I bet he gets the winner of that fight because Aljo or a re- rematch would be a great story mm-hmm. for Lopez. For sure. Yeah. So let's make it happen. I don't know how, but <laughs> <laughs> I would be excited. And how happy was Aljo? I thought it was so cute. He was so happy for his boy winning the belt. I love that. There was, I mean, we've talked about this before. There's some more important things than, you know, winning the fights and, yeah. and the money and stuff like that. And I just love that friendship. I love, love, love everything about it. They didn't just not fight because he knew it'd be a nightmare. <laughs> it was the love to kept them together. <laughs> now, now you uh, really have a reason to make that um, Japanese art with them. Oh my god! Yes, I'll have uh, Aljo wearing Marab's hat, going ready to take your hat back, and it's like <laughs> can't see the. For some reason, he's shirtless. <laughs> the shower hotel room. It's the showers uh, after the fight yes, backstage. Yes, yes. <laughs> Tosses him a towel. I'll hold on to this hat if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it. No, oh, I can't uh. wait. We need more storyline. We need new. I need. I need more uh, uh, information. Okay. More inspo. I need a muse. But okay. I'm really excited. But we could do some uh, inspo with that dance that. Marab and, and Shevchenko. Shevchenko were doing that was I'm sorry but that was probably the whitest it dancing. was a beautiful collaboration Angela <laughs> it's the whitest dancing I've ever seen just because it didn't have booty shaking <laughs> just because nobody got down on the ground and put the ass up it was so hunky dory it was really good. <laughs> it was adorable it was really good for some reason it reminded me of when kids do those cultural dances you know like a cultural dance recital <laughs> It was That's exactly really, what it was. They're both classically trained in in the art of Georgian <laughs> Georgian two step and very respectful. Kragastani spin. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> it was, it really was so cute. cute. It was really cute, and it was cute. Like Aljo was just like. This is so white and just <laughs> clapping He's in the used background. He's to it by now. Oh, yeah. You know he knows how to do it. Yeah. He knows how to do the step. They do it every time they go out drinking. Yeah, yeah. They did it great. on the dance floor at the club while they were celebrating. Oh, I bet they did. I, I hope so they cute. did. I want to find footage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's out there. Well, um, we have so many more fights to talk about, uh, and we're already there, but... What's one that you want to talk about before we get to our break? Is there one that just like <clears throat> jumps out at you? Um, I think we have to talk about Aldana versus Dumont. Yeah. I think we got to. We got to. Um, so, oh, so <laughs> one thing that I thought was pretty funny was, you know how they did the worlds? 
Yeah. With all the different fights. I think the first one that they did was Aldana and Dumont. And of course, it was an Aztec temple where they do the blood sacrifices. They wanted it and they got it. They made that happen. They did. <laughs> they they least... said Aldana will be our sacrifice, our human sacrifice to the Aztec gods. And which, and there it is. Which is historically a- accurate because they're not going to sacrifice someone from a different place. They're going to sacrifice one of their own citizens. Otherwise, the gods aren't going to be pleased. That's how it happens. Be, yeah, it has to be a proper sacrifice. I would have been so pissed if they did that. Like, yo, <laughs> how are you going to set me up like that? Man, that cut was nasty. A lot of, actually, a couple people asked us um, when we were, when we did our post, uh, some people asked if we think it should have been stopped. That was yeah. another Herb Dean fight. Mm, Herb. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, I was kind of happy with it. I'm fine that they didn't stop it. It initially, it wasn't in a terrible place, although mm. it was, you know, running into her eyes. It wasn't like over the eyebrow. It wasn't like in the, in the, um, affecting the vision. It was more of a nuisance. Yeah. Uh, but as the fight progressed, it did split down. It looked almost like it split down into her like tear duct, to be honest. It was so nasty. Um, and that cut man was like really rough with it. Uh, it was- <laughs> Rob is a good cut man too. No, like, no, no like hate or shade on Yeah, him. yeah. But like, like, man, it was so nasty. Like it was a huge, the huge, fa- huge cut. I think you can see her skull in that uh, video that I sent you yeah. where um, they're just going through it backstage before they start stitching it up. You can see where the flesh stops and it's just smooth afterwards. Yeah. It, that was so nasty. And Dumont's power just must be crazy. I mean, she's the one that had Chelsea Handler running away in and the middle of the she fight. she was fighting backwards. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. she wasn't even really coming forward. I mean, she had, of course, she had bursts where she was kind of blitzing yeah. a bit. But most of her punches were were going backwards. And she just had huge punches, huge volume, super powerful. Uh, that cut was from a headbutt, though. Initially, yeah. yeah, initially, yeah, but um, she had already been cut on the bridge of the nose at yeah. that point, and uh, yeah, the punches just kept opening it up more and more, yeah. And, it, and I think um, Adani has received a lot of criticism for her strategy in, in her fight, she really didn't switch it up past the boxing that she normally does, which has given her success in the past. Mm. It would have been nice to see her just. Uh, She was coming forward and she was shelving herself, protecting herself really well. It would have been nice if she had put some punches in front of it, added some, you know, kicks to punctuate her combinations, just switching it up, maybe even faking a takedown, just something to mix it up because she just kept chasing Dumont down and Dumont had an answer for everything that, that Aldana threw. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about with adaptability. If you're able to adapt to a situation, hey, she's chopping up my leg, she's punching me, she's uh, jabbing me faster than I can move my head. Like, it was really impressive seeing Aldana hit her head movement, and then as soon as she stopped in the middle, boom. You know, it was uh, very well-timed. Dumont was just firing on on all cylinders. And when that's happening, you kind of got to... Like flip the table over. Yeah. You have to just do something crazy. Yeah. Go go ham. And we saw a lot of people do that that night. Like a lot of people who weren't really winning the rounds, but then they just decided, okay, fuck it. Threw big haymakers, started spinning, and then eventually something got through. Aldana never got off that center line. She was following the whole time. She was going straight into her. And Dumont would circle to the point where Aldana's side is on is against the fence and Dumont's side is against the fence instead of Aldana pushing her back against the fence. If that makes sense. Like they were, she was following her like a puppy as opposed to trying to press and cut off. And that's when you really get led into things. I mean, we talked about this with the uh, Silva versus Andrade fight. It was really similar. Only this time the girls had the same reach and she was still able to do that, which is credit to her speed and her power. I mean, the ham hawks, on on Dumont, talk about yams. <laughs> that girl, she, she puts got our some yams w- to shame. She got some wills. She's able to pop in and out, and she has a uh, post weight cut wills. Mm-hmm. 
Like that's that's the real impressive when you got the junk in the trunk after you cut weight. Like that's the really impressive one. Yeah, that means you got power. Yes, but sustainability. Yeah, that like popping in and out. I think the jab is the thing I was most impressed with because she could come in, throw volume, come out, and then when Aldana would try to counter she'd pop in with the she jab was sticking that jab and she was like yeah. fading back on it too it was really nice she was yeah. turning locking her shoulder out really nicely so it was really stiff mm-hmm. and with aldana coming forward it just it really punctuated that power yeah it just exploded that but it, yeah it's a shame that the initial cut started with the head butt and i mean I could have seen them stopping it just because Aldana was so affected by it in the third round. Mm -hmm. Like it was shooting out blood right after the cut man wiped her down and everyone had to get out of the cage. It's already squirting. It was interesting that they didn't bring the doctors in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Normally I feel like in any other case that would have happened. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why he didn't, but he, he did not bring the doctor in. Did they have a doctor? In the sphere. Maybe there wasn't room for the doctor. <laughs> there wasn't room for the media crew. There wasn't room for any other fighters requesting tickets. They yeah. were just like, listen, we, sorry. We, we We're going to sit this one out. The, the, the doctor's outside of the sphere in the ambulance. He'll just. That's all we need. He'll just get you afterwards. Yeah, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. I'll tape you up in the ambulance. It's your only way to the hospital. Oh, man. The doctor was the ring card girl. She was dressed as a witch doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it was a really nasty cut, and, and it was to the point where she was lifting her shirt up and wiping her face. Like, this poor thing. She was trying so but hard to stay in the fight. But the third round was her best fucking round. And it's weird, too, right? She yeah. was trying so hard to stay in the fight. Um, she must have felt like she had her number. She had something she could do. If anything, Dumont slowed down a bit. Mm-hmm. Like she wasn't able to back up and run as fast, and Aldana started landing on her. Yeah, yeah. I I would have loved Aldana to throw like maybe even a head kick. The way that Dumont was slipping. Anytime to the she outside. was exiting, there could have been yeah. a head kick. Yeah, she was she was running away, running away. Anytime you could have thrown a lead switch if she was moving this way, you could have thrown a uh, a big right head kick. Like mm-hmm. I feel like head kicks were were missed in this fight. Yeah, yeah. The anytime she threw a punch, the head would slip out of the way and just uh uh. Like that, that was there a bunch, but the times that she did land with power definitely got a reaction from Dumont. And, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's something that she can go back to the drawing board and work on, but she's going to need to rest that face for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And Dumont, I mean, what's next for her? Let's pull. What is next for the Do Monster? That's what I would call her if I made her nickname, if I was her teammate. Do you monster? Well, <laughs> Who's have, next for you? What about like Ketlin Vieira or Kayla Harrison, Macy Kieson? Has she fought Kieson yet? Um, Let's she has. No. I would love to see that fight. Let's see. Yeah, let's put her up against her. Yeah, that I mean, Macy looked dope in her. Oh last no, she fight. already fought her. Oh, oh who won? Macy won. Oh, split though. It was, it a, was split. a split. That would be a good rematch. I gotta remember what that looked like. But yeah, I don't that remember would... what that looked like. And Dumont missed weight there too, so maybe mm. she was dragging a bit. That was at one forty-five. Jeez. Let's see. But yeah, I love. I mean, I'd love to see that she beat. Uh, Jermaine Durandamy, which is a huge thing, even though Durandamy was coming back off of, uh, you know, being a mama. That's a big win for her. Dumont's coming up there, man. That that was such an impressive fight. Uh, Carol Rosa would be an interesting one, too. She just had a big win over Panny, and her fight with Aldana. Yeah, her fight with Aldana was another bloody one where Aldana took a lot of damage, but she was able to still gut it out and win. I think that was her thoughts going into that third round. She was digging deep in the same way, but she was just out too much Mm -hmm. after the first two. I don't think she was able to get going as fast, but that would be an interesting one. Carol Rosa, she has really nice leg kicks. I'm wondering if she'd be able to time those Leg kicks when uh, Dumont pops in. You know, it's always like a good um, 
battle when you have someone who's able to put the kicks and the punches together and the elbows too. Her mm-hmm. elbows are nasty in her last fight. Dude, Carol's calf kicks too. Yeah, yeah. I it would be those. a calf kick battle. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Macy would be fun. Um, winner of Kayla Ketlin if they don't get the title fight because... Pena and Julian, or Pennington and uh, Pena Pena, still have to fight. That's coming up, too. Yeah, they still have to fight. So, yeah, either wait. Either wait for for that fight. I don't think she's going to wait. I think she'll take another fight. Well, no, Dumont's going to take another fight. But I'm wondering um, what's going to happen with the winner of Kayla and Ketlin. They're probably going to get the winner of that fight, too. Mm. So yeah, she'll she'll probably end up fighting someone like Macy next, and that'll be a fun one. That'll be a fun one for sure. I counted Macy out in that last fight, and she dominated. Yeah, she's been looking good. Myra Buena Silva too. That would be a fun one. I could see that too. Although Myra's on, is she on a two fight losing streak? She is. I think yes, it was Amanda and then Macy. Oh no, Raquel. Raquel and then Macy. Yeah. Yeah. And she lost to Holmes. So, yeah, I don't know if they would put them together because they're kind of on opposite trajectories, but you never know. Yeah. It's I, not a completely full division. Mm. So there's room for, you know, mixing and matches of, yeah. of that. But I like the idea of the rematch or the Myra Buena. See, see if she still got it because those are pretty top level people that she lost to. Yeah. Um, yeah, but nasty, nasty cut. Good on Aldana. I was gutting through. The Mexican spirit was in her for yeah, sure. I think maybe that was a prime reason that the fight wasn't stopped. No, it was for like, sure. that was the energy of it, you know? Mm-hmm. I feel like the fans would have gone crazy. Yeah. Had it, it been stopped. And if you saw her last fight, you know that she's going to keep fighting no matter what. Yeah. Like she was real busted up in that last one, too. And she was able to get the win so it would have been sucky if she was able to have a moment like that and get that taken away from her because of cut for sure especially because it was a headbutt but yeah all right well let's go to our bonus because there's still a ton of fights to talk about there are so many good fights in the prelims so good that dana white just shit all over the co-main and main event (laughs) (laughs) he's like i hope you left before that happened he did not he said that. He did not. He said, he pulled a, what's that guy? David Feldman. He pulled no. a BKFC guy. Dana, no. Dana, you knew what you were doing. You know exactly what game plan they were going to have. And they went out and did it. And now you're mad. Yeah, get mad at the matchmakers. Hey. The they did what they did. They, they're they going to do it. Maybe if, uh, I don't know. Maybe if you didn't let that fight happen. <laughs> <laughs> let Sean you couldn't put it off any longer. You could have let Sean O'Malley fight Cheeto again. I'm just saying. They were one and one. Oh, that could have happened. Stop it. Hey. <laughs> it would have been closer to Mexico than uh Georgia. <laughs> just saying you could have done that. But you didn't, and this is what you got. So it is what it is. Max Holloway. <laughs> Next time. All right, so we'll be back. Uh, What are we going to talk about in the bonus? Uh, Well, we have a couple on the prelims that we need to talk about. We have some fan questions again as well. Might dabble into next week's fights. Who knows? You gotta, you gotta tune in to see. I didn't even know what next week's fights are. I was just so focused on the sphere. I know, but Mm. there, there are more fights coming up. Dang. Yeah. All right. Well, I better get ready. (laughs) All right, guys. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. You want a coffee pot? Ooh.